Hello and welcome to this tutorial of Prevet. My name is Joseph Terzis and I'm a developer at Web2Learn. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to our application called BrevApp by looking at the home environment where we can view some basic information about what BrevApp is capable of doing. Next, let's go to the About page where we can find information about the team that worked on this application along with the members of the project consortium. Let's dive into the issue credential tool. Here we can view the online credential builder that will help us create our own credential. So let's click on that. On this page we can see all the credentials that we have created and also the ability to create a new credential template. So let's create a new credential template. Now this is the credential template. All the tabs and fields that are with asterisks next to them, they are mandatory and need to be filled. All the rest are optional. Also if we want information about what a field means or does, we can go and hover on the blue circle and we can read. Now, let's put the credential title since it's mandatory. Here it's the awarding body. We can see this is mandatory also. We can create our awarding body from this pattern. Now, again it's the same philosophy. All the fields with asterisks are mandatory. So let's put a legal name. As we can see, the rest of the fields, common name, home, page and logo, are optional. Also, under further details, we can see that this is mandatory. So let's fill it. Again, the rest are optional. We can fill all of them, of course, if we want. Now, under more information, legal address, we can see that the whole tab is mandatory. So we need to fill the whole tab. We can move on. Contact information are optional. We can fill it, of course. Member of groups optional. More information optional. Last modification date optional. After we create our organization and we put all the necessary fields here, we can click Save. Since I have created already for Web to Learn, I will press Cancel. Here. We put the awarding body of the credential. Now, description is optional. Under further details, we can see that valid from tab is mandatory. So we need to put a date here. Expiration date is optional. Credential type, we put generic. And now we move on to the claims. We always need at least one claim in order to issue a credential. Of course, we can have more, but one is mandatory. So let's create an assessment. Assessment title is mandatory. So let's fill it. Assessed by is optional. Awarded by is again mandatory. Since we are awarding the assessment, we put our organization that we created before on the awarding body. Description is optional. We can see under further details, assessment date and the rest are optional. Also here, also in grading scheme, of course we can fill all of these. Now, under more information, we can see again the title. This is taken automatically. It's the, take the, the title of the assessment. But here we can add more information about this. Additional fields, we can add the home page. 
we can add where, where the assessment took place, address, location, time, and the rest. After we are done and filled all the assessment details we need about our credential, we can click Save. As you can see, this is the assessment we created. It is taken automatically. Of course, I can add more claims if it's needed for my credential, but only one is mandatory. After we fill all the necessary fields that we need, we can click Save. Now we see, again, we created our credential. From the Issue tab here, we can issue this credential. On this page, it, we enter the recipient data. On the left side, we can add more data about the recipient if we need. Those four are always mandatory. Given name, family name, email address, wallet address. I will add date of birth. So let's continue to enter recipient data. Here we can see the given name, family name. We also need to put a grade. Now I confirm and go next. On this page, we can seal our credential in order to provide authenticity. We click on seal and here we enter the password for the seal that Web2Learn will provide. Next. As you can see, the credential sealed correctly. So then we click send to send the credential to the recipient through email. Now, since the credential is sent, I can go to my email, to my inbox, and I will see the credential that have been sent. Now, the credential is sent in JSON format. So we need to download this JSON. And after we have downloaded, we go to the EDCI viewer. Here, we go into upload credential and we put the credential we created. Here we can view all the information about the credential. And after that, we have the ability to export it in PDF. If we go to a do badges, we can simulate how the Edubadzi system issues a credential to a student. So these are all the fields that Edubadzi gives us. On the schema comparison tool, I can select one of three European standards, Diploma Supplement, Micro HC and Echo. Let's click Diploma Supplement. I can select any of the attributes here shown and let's say that my schema has the same attributes with Diploma. So I can see that I'm 42% compliant with Diploma Supplement. If I add more, of course it decreases and if I remove, it decreases. The same it can be done with the rest. Let's say for example that I have this. I see that I'm 24% compliant with micro HC. I can also get some ideas from here what more I can add on my schema. Now, moving to schema creation tool. I can load my own schema in a JSON format or I can create a hybrid schema from the start. So let's say I want some fields from diploma supplement. I can add these fields. I want some fields from micro HC and some fields from echo. We can add any of these or we can add an entire diploma. Let's say I can I want all the diploma supplement. I can then save the schema. I get a TXT format, but more importantly 
I get the JSON format. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to reach out to our support team at the web to learn.